Kevin Williams on tennis saxophone. small but intelligent group. That's what we do. That's what we do. Go ahead, Mike, you start that. Tori Bell Vice Band. This act has earned a reputation as one of the best blue-eyed soul groups of the era. Revered by singers and musicians alike, we are proud to present members of the Memphis Music Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Box Tops.
you. Well, thank you. Well, uh, we're the Box Tops, originally from Memphis, Tennessee, and um, that was Call Like a Baby, our third single. Went up to number two position in the spring of 1968, and it never could break into that number one position because there were so many great artists at the time and so many great songs in the charts. We had people like the Beatles with Hey Jude. We had Aretha Franklin with Think. We had, uh, who else? Rascals. Yeah, the Rascals with It's a Beautiful Morning. And one of my favorites was Otis Redding sitting on the dock of a bay. <laughs> so really great stuff. And the song that kept us from that number one spot in 1968 was Bobby Goldsboro's Honey. And well, you didn't react very much, but we reacted really sadly. I mean, I sti when it still comes on the radio, I have to turn it down or turn it off or whatever because I just don't understand how come it stayed there. I'm happy for him. Wasn't happy we never knocked him off the first position. But uh, let's move on. This is one that um, Quentin Tarantino chose to put in his latest movie. Uh, I guess it was last year. I think it was maybe two years. But uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it's one called, you ready, Gary? I'm ready. All right, ready. there you go. We're all ready. Choo Choo Train. <laughs>
got to start real slow. She's going to love you tonight. But first, you got to treat her right. Shh. You got to start nice and gentle. You got to make her feel good. Huh. Tell her that you love her. Like you knew you should. Every day and every night. But first, you got to treat her right. Hey, hey, hey. Take her home. Feels good. All night long. Oh, sugar. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Lobster rolls. Chowder. Now, if you follow my method, treat as nice as you can. You're going to get a reputation as a Cape Cod man. Every day and every night. But first, you got to treat her right. Yeah, treat her right. Treat her right. Hey, hey, hey. Take her home. Love her all night. They can feel good all over, boys. Oh. All right. Oh. So good. So good. So good. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Look what everybody's missing, huh? I'll tell you. We're glad you showed up, gang. We are. It's a nice, beautiful place here. It's really a nice place. Yeah, we just came off the Flower Power cruise. And you may have heard about that thing. That was fun out in the Caribbean. Yeah, and now we're here. So and tomorrow we're somewhere else. Yeah. Doing a little New England tour, I guess. Um, let's see. This. When we came out in 1967, our producer, our first producer, was a guy from Muscle Shoals, Alabama area. And he was a staff singer-songwriter at Muscle Shoals' famous recording studio called Fame. And a lot of great artists recorded there. And uh, did his songs. And when we were putting our first album together, we were looking for songs. And of course, he was such a great, well-known songwriter, we decided to uh, add this song to our first album. Uh, this was originally done by James and Bobby Purify. It's one called I'm Your Puppet. <laughs>
your puppet. I'm your puppet. Yes, I'm your puppet. I'm your puppet. In 1969, we had a record climbing the charts, and uh, I guess it was about number 26 in Billboard, the national press, music press, uh, and with a bullet, meaning it was going up fast, and I quit the band. And you might ask, I, I thought you might ask that. <laughs> Gary never gets this. Every night I say the same thing, and he always guesses something else, and he's yet to get it, it right. So I get the right, right, yeah. wrong. He what? gets it right all the time, wrong. <laughs> but anyway, um, to get a degree in classical music, and my mother asked. Why? Thank you. That's a good question. But being from Memphis and, and a string player, I was learning cello and, and upright bass. Uh, I got to play in a lot of different sessions around town, and I got to work with a lot of different people. Uh, I did television shows with uh, uh, Jim Henson, and working with his Muppets. <laughs> so that's a pretty cool thing that I wouldn't do <laughs> being a rock star, right? So, um, and I did you know, ballets, I did operas, I did symphony, uh, and I also ended up in a lot of recording studios, including at Stax, uh, where I worked with a guy named Isaac Hayes on a song called Shaft. So I that's it. All right, skip. Let's let's hold it down. You don't have a wah wah pedal anyway. No, so somebody right. took it. Go. Yeah, took it. Babe. All right, hush your mouth. He's a bad. <laughs> I'm talking about Shaft. That's what he said. Anyway, now I'm totally lost. You know, in these senior moments, I get off on this tangent. I don't even know what I was talking about. Oh, I quit the band. That's yeah. right. I quit right, the band. Right. And this is a song well, that why? that uh, would. <laughs> well, we've already gotten past that point. Oh. You know, you're gonna have to catch up. So. But uh, I quit the band, and this was a song that was out at the time when I quit, one called Soul Deep. <laughs> Darling, I don't know much. I know I love you so much. But life depends on your touch My love is a river running so deep Way down inside me it's a so deep Too big to hide and it can't be denied My love is a river running so deep I dress up 
kept it there for you Just to show I adore you Nothing I wouldn't do for you Uh oh, it looks like it looks like Bill's quitting the band again. I don't know where he's going. Getting some chowder. <laughs> be our guest. Have fun. Have fun. So uh, we are the box tops. It's nice to be up here and. Uh, I'm going to introduce everybody up there. I think there may be more of us here than out there, but what the hell? We're all, we're all friends now, and uh, y some of you may have been on our website, boxtops.com. We have a new phone number, actually. If you, we have a, a club called Box Tops Family and Friends. You just dial 217-BOX-TOPS. Sign up. We'll send you a free download of an unreleased song, and all kinds of other stuff we'll do. But... Uh, We've got some horn players that are working with us. They're local guys, and uh, they're going to be with us. They're going to be with us tomorrow night. We're over in Woonsocket, Rhode Island, tomorrow night. We got Sean Batista and Greg Washburn on the horns. <laughs> now, the traveling box tops on the keyboards. He's standing up there. He's from Atlanta, Georgia. Lives in Nashville now. And he cut his teeth playing and recording and producing people like Joe South and Tommy Rowe. This is Mr. Mike Stewart. <laughs> the handsome guy on the drums back there. Now, you may not recognize his face, but he had a career in Los Angeles as a session musician, session drummer. And he was on over 200 soundtracks, films, commercials, and TV shows. And then when he had spare time, he toured the world with Olivia Newton-John the Everly Brothers, and Seals and Crofts. Mr. Ron Krasinski. Now, my, my pleasure to introduce my good buddy, one of the original founding members of the Box Tops, on the guitar and the sitar and the vocals. He's originally from Memphis, lives in Nashville now. And he was telling us the other week that he lost count at over 115 artists that he's either recorded or toured with. Or bothered, you know, it could be one of the things. But uh, some of those people include, well, he sang back up on Willie Nelson's You Were Always On My Mind. He toured with Billy Preston, Sam and Dave, uh, Tim McGraw. Uh, but my favorite, my favorite, he toured with Tennessee Ernie Ford. Yeah. Yes, indeed. 16 tons. <laughs> Mr. Gary Talley. 
And over on the keyboards now, he didn't really quit. He's another founding member of the Box Stops from Memphis, and music runs so deep in his family. His daddy worked for Sam Phillips at Sun Records, and his dad also played percussion on some of the very first Elvis Presley records. And his brother, B.B., played bass guitar for over 25 years with Jerry Lee Lewis. So we're talking some DNA in the music DNA. Mr. Bill Cunningham. What? And, and, and you're probably wondering who this guy is right there. What? I certainly am. No, me too. Who is this guy? I wasn't here yesterday. This guy is not only our manager, but he plays all kinds of things. Everything from that bass to that guitar to the ukulele, glockenspiel, zither, theremin, all kinds of stuff. He's played with everybody from... Peter Noon to Jay and the Techniques to Tommy Rowe. Gosh, I don't know who he's. He's also our manager, which means he works harder than any of when us. When they do. sleep, I work. Yes, he's working all the time. Mr. Rick Levy. <laughs> and we're going to continue our Memphis theme. Everything that we do has something to do with Memphis. And. Um, and people, Bill we, is gonna and people we know. And people yeah. we know. And worked with. And people that have heard of Memphis. And people that are from <laughs> Egypt, <laughs> where the first Memphis was, actually. That's right. <laughs> and how many Memphises are there in the world? I looked that up once, and I forgot the answer. So you're not going to learn very much with us tonight. So don't worry. <laughs> well, there's a little club called the Memphis Pub in Domodossa, Italy, <laughs> right on the Swiss border. You probably didn't know that. Probably don't care either. It's not interesting at all. But, okay. We're going to feature Bill. Pop that organ a little bit up for us, Mikey. We're going to try to do a Booker T and the MG song. Yeah. Well, don't say yeah, because I quit <laughs> piano lessons when I was in the third grade. So, <laughs> you know. He's like a classical musician like you are. Well, he is, and thanks for remembering what I said two songs back. <laughs> But, um, well, we'll see if you recognize it. Okay, let's go ahead and Nothing yet? Tell it.
Well, my piano Thank lessons you. paid off. Bill Cunningham on keyboards. Now we're going to do another song with totally different notes in it. Well, there's some of the same notes. We use some of the same notes that the Beatles used, if you'll notice. And Bobby Rydell. Oh, poor Bobby Rydell. <laughs> So this, this one's uh, interesting, you know, in 67 when we were doing our first album, we walked in and uh, another artist was in the studio and we had to wait for him to finish up, but eventually Wilson Pickett finished and uh, after he left, uh, he left his guitar player sitting there who was a singer-songwriter named Bobby Womack uh, and he pitched us songs, meaning that he asked us to play songs and showed us some of the songs he had written and we included a couple on our first album. Uh, this song we didn't play, uh, uh, record on our first album, but uh, a British group did, and you probably thought that they wrote it, but they didn't. Bobby, Ro Bobby Womack wrote it, uh, but made a lot of money because of the English group. So I think everybody was happy in the end. Let's see if you recognize this one. to run around with every man in town spent all my money playing a high class games she put me out it was a pity how I cried tables turning now it's her turn to cry because I used to love her but it's all over now the morning get my breakfast in bed when I was all messed up she'd come and ease my aching head but now she's here and there with every man in town still trying to take me for I say oh clown because I used to love her Rick Levy on vocals there. Well, Gary and I were on backing, but Rick was the main guy. Yeah. yeah. The only one that counts. I wish so. I wrote it. Yeah, I wish <laughs> I had written it too. Yeah. Uh, 
So I, this next tune is sort of difficult. I guess the best way to introduce it is to say, if we were a British group, you would, you would envision when you hear this, you would envision lush green pasture with a white gazebo sitting in a park with Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band playing. And because it's us, it's more like the tarmac outside of a Walmart with the <laughs> Salvation Army band playing. But that's us, so that's who you got tonight. This is one uh, called Sweet Cream Ladies. Sweet Cream Ladies forward march, the world owes you a living. Of what you're giving to the lost and lonely people of the night. Out of need, they see direction for their life. They will love you in the darkness, take advantage of your starkness, and refuse to recognize you in the light. Sweet cream ladies, forward march, think what you're providing. Sweet cream ladies, do your part. Of hiding, tell the socialites to look the other way. It's instinctive stimulation you can make. It's a necessary function made for those without compunction who get tired of vanilla every day. Ignore them. Sweet cream ladies, do your part. Sweet cream men, adore them. Let them satisfy the ego of the male. Let them fabricate success for those who fail. And should penalties pursue them when there's really credit to them? They may keep a simple fellow out of jail. Sweet cream ladies, forward march. came out in 67, a lot of stuff happened, right, in 67? Oh, yeah. And we did, uh, we did some Coke commercials, Coca-Cola commercials for the radio. And uh, my recollection about that is we went to New York to record. And of course, being from Memphis, we'd never seen a building higher than two stories. <laughs> so when we got to New York, it was like, damn, hey, these, these people know how to build big buildings, <laughs> you know? So um, we went into the recording studio, and uh, they put us on like the 46th floor. And I've never been up that high. I don't think even my airplane that carried me to New York flew that high. But, um, you know, and then they, this was the rehearsal room. And it's like, what's a rehearsal room? I mean, we've been recording, and nobody told us about rehearsal rooms. <laughs> we just showed up and started recording. And they said, no, 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 you got to wait. You know, other people in the recording studio in a, in a higher, higher floor. So we waited and we rehearsed and we worked out the numbers and stuff like that. And, uh, and the clock, you know, little by little, the clock just ticked up to right on the 12 marker. They said, okay, it's time to go up to the 96th floor, <laughs> right? I said, okay. You know, so we went up there and we recorded it. But that's my recollection. It's, it's not a great story, but it's a true story. And I just, you know, that's my first impression of New York and being in a New York recording studio. I never knew anyone recorded that high. Uh, well, in that way. <laughs> in that way, <laughs> that high. Yeah. Yeah. Altitude wise. Yeah. Gary, do you have any uh, particular memories that no, you want to share? No, I, I forgot the whole thing. You I, did? <laughs> yeah, you had a brain. No, I, I do have some. Our producer went with us, and he was an Alabama guy, and it was so funny because he'd never been to New York. Yeah. 
And this he, is the guy that wrote I'm Your Puppet, right? Dan Penn. Yeah, so uh, he was a guy from Vernon, Alabama, and he wore overalls and stuff like that. And we went out to eat at the City Squire Inn, I think, and um, <laughs> he, uh, iced tea is a big thing. And in, in, in Memphis and in, in the South, we call it sweet tea, you know, like you order sweet tea. That's just what people say. Well, the waitress thought that, sh that he was calling her sweetie. <laughs> and that, that started it off bad right there. A anyway. Almost got arrested. And, and then, then he looks down at, the, at the, the rolls. He picks up a roll and he goes, well, these rolls are hard. He'd never seen a hard roll before. Mm. Then he looks and says, well, this butter's got ice on it. <laughs> anyway, the whole thing freaked him out yeah. and freaked out the waitress too, but... Um, so mm. that's Memphians and yeah. Alabamians and, uh, and New York. Yeah, yeah he yes, he is. Song. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Really great singer-songwriter. Anyway, uh, Mikey on the board there, if you want to play yeah. a little bit, we'll, we'll play just a short excerpt of a couple of our co-commercials, if you will. Tops are moving on. Coke after Coke after Coke. <laughs> yeah. These, out, these are on YouTube. Yeah. All right, I want everybody to get you up your hands, your feet, put your ankles and your legs together. Give us some of that old soul clapping. have to love me, but you did, but you did, yes you did, and I thank you, you didn't have to hold me, but you did, but you did, yes you did, and I thank you, you took your love to someone else, with no
Thank you. That was a Thank Sam you. and Dave song. No, Sam and Dave. Sam and Dave. And remember, this guy used to be Sam Moore's band director. I don't know. Right. If, did, did you mm-hmm. mention that? Yeah. I okay. Did, I did, All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks very much. Uh, and let me s- let me say this. This is a, a little unplanned kind of statement and stuff, but I think it's nice to do at this moment. But uh, when you heard the recordings of the you know radio uh, commercials, uh, that was Alex Chilton, our lead singer at the time. He's passed away. Actually. All, all of the five members, except for Gary and, and me, have have left this planet. So it just well, leaves. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> we're we're staying as long as we can. We're it, we're only visiting though, so you know we're we're gonna move on and you see s- what you else. You spread is the happening. word to your friends next yeah. time we come back. Thank but you. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're st- we're still. I mean that's what our lives were about too. So, but uh, but that's why the sounds were different. But that was me and Gary and the rest of the original guys on that recording stuff. And you're seeing what's left of us. And you know, well they were, but Alex was so good. Uh, you know, it was like you know, nobody paid attention to us. So, <laughs> but we deci- we decided uh, intentionally decided not to replace Alex when he passed. We didn't play for about five years, and we got back together. Um, and that's a longer story, and I won't go into it. But we, we basically, Gary and I agreed, you know, we're just basically going to sing our songs. And either the people are going to see a fake group because we're not out, or we're going to do the songs and the people get to hear our songs. And so that's what you're hearing. You're hearing the real thing. So, sorry, and that's... Totally not part of the show, but it's a nice uh, explanation. You and guys, I, th- you guys really yeah. Deserve. So thank you. So, so, uh, well, you're going to be our friends before it's all over. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I guarantee you. And I, I said, said that. So. Oh. We know that. We, we, we do the best we can, whether Thank it's you, you know yeah. a small venue or yeah. last week on three thousand people on the Flower Power yeah. cruise. You know, it's but, like but we're we, here. We play with as much yeah. intensity and much honesty as we can for everybody. You know, so it doesn't matter what the crowd is. We know it. <laughs> You're here, so we're having fun. We expect you to have fun. We're trying to bring back memories. We're trying to do what we love. We hope you love it too. So. Yeah, thank you. So now we go into um, a song that, well, when we put our first single out, uh, a British group got a hold of it before we could sign the European contract. Uh, well, actually, the UK contract. We had Europe settled, you know, Germany and, and France and the rest of them, but not the UK. So they got it and they made a cover of it, meaning they recorded it themselves and put it out and it started climbing the charts. and. Dan got pissed, you know, uh, Dan Pan got pissed that they would do such a thing. And somehow or another, during the discussions in that first album, he said something about, we ought to show the British what we can do, that we can do their music just as well as they can ours. So we ended up doing this song on our first album because it was the latest British group to release a brand new song in the States the week that we were in the studio. So let's see if you get this one. See, we never tell you much anyway, so. Skip the light fandango Turn cartwheels across the floor 
I was feeling kind of seasick The crowd called out for more The room was humming harder As the ceiling flew away We called out for another dream And the waiter brought a tray And so it was so much later As the miller told his tale That her face at first just ghostly Turned a wider shade of pain But the truth is plain to see How I wandered through my playing cards And I would not let her be One of sixteen vessel virgins who were leaving for the cold Although my eyes were wide open They might just as well have been closed And so it was So much later As the miller told his tale Her face at first is ghostly, turned a wider shade of pale.
wine and women is my only crave. I swear, a big legged woman gonna carry me straight to my grave. Born on a bad side. I mean, down, I began to crawl. If it was for bad luck. This next tune was, uh, I think it was our seventh single or something like that. And it's the only one that didn't get into the top 40. And we analyzed it to figure out, you know, okay, why didn't it do any better than it did? It did make the top 100, but it didn't ever get in the top 40. And, you know, we thought about it and the you know, performance was good, the recording was good, the quality of the singing uh, was 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 fine, uh, just everything was okay. The only thing we came to the conclusion that it must have been the composer Bob Dylan, <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, uh, it was probably more due to the fact that uh, a half dozen bands had it out at the time, different versions of it. So maybe that had some effect on it. But um, anyway, this was our seventh single. It was one uh, you may not have heard us play, but you will tonight. <laughs> and it's one called I Shall Be Released. They say everything can be replaced. They say every distance is not near So I remember every face Of every man who put me here I see my life come shining From the west down to the
day now, any day now, I shall be relieved. Now yonder stands a man in this lonely crowd. Well, Memphis, we've covered a lot of soul, a lot of rhythm and blues, a little pop, a little rock, but how about a little B.B. King Memphis style? Rock me, rock me all night long. Yeah, you can rock me, rock me all night long. But then you rock me, pretty mama. My back ain't got no bone. And roll me just like a wagon wheel. Yeah, you can roll me, mama, just like a wagon wheel. But when you shake, rap, and roll me, don't know how good you make me feel. Yeah, Gary. Saxophone! I 
ain't got no bones Watch the drummer. That's what you learn from that song. So at least Andy. So uh, well, we came along in 1967. Uh -oh. Well, you say uh oh, but you see it what he's getting? A ukulele, and you know something's wrong when you see a blue-eyed soul band or whatever we're called bringing out a ukulele, right? But this was uh, this was the summer of love, so anything could happen. It was in the air. And in San Francisco, there was a lot of stuff in the air. And uh, the music was just coming and sort of walked over the United States and all the way through the Mid-South. And we heard it and we thought, you know, we ought to combine that with some like Memphis soul. And it was a terrible idea. And don't laugh. You realize I'm introducing the next song that you're going to hear, right? So, uh, but uh, anyway, in 1967, we did this. It's our, you know, number one flower power kind of song, if you can call it that. But it does come with a warning. And uh, it basically goes like this. The kaleidoscopic imagery of this next tune has been known to induce flashbacks in certain susceptible minds. <laughs> and... Uh, Usually about half the people are susceptible, but you're so small of a crowd, I'm sure all of you are susceptible, <laughs> you know. So you think about that. And if you turn and you see your neighbor tripping, help them out because there ain't no free clinics anymore. I mean, you're totally on your own nowadays. So don't expect any kind of help from either society or us, <laughs> okay? Because we ain't giving them. Uh, this is uh, Neon Rainbow.
Thank you. Well, I hope you survived that we have for 50-something years. So uh, anyway, uh, we're getting toward the end of the set here. And this is where I usually point out the five members, the original yeah. members. And I like to say their names. So I'm going to say them, right? Alex Chilton, Danny Smythe, John Evans, Gary Talley, myself, Bill Cunningham. We thank you for making this number one and keeping it there. Not even Bobby Goldsboro could stop this thing from going number one. So uh, make sure your tray tables are stowed, properly <laughs> stowed, and your, your, your seat backs are in the original upright position, and fasten your seat belts. The letter. Give me a ticket for an airplane. Ain't got time to take a fast train. Lonely days are gone. guys. Thank you. We're going to do one more for you, if you don't mind. But before I do, normally, normally we'd go out in the back. We, you know, one of the things we did over COVID was record the first CD we've done in like a million years. So we have copies of that here. And it was really from the fans who wanted something to take home. It's a, a lot of the songs you heard tonight. If you want to pick up a CD, Mike and I, we'll be right up at the front of the stage with CDs. And we have some pictures that we've all signed ahead of time because of the COVID thing and all that stuff. And, um, you know, call the number if you want 217 box tops. Join the family and friends. I'm sure we'll be up this way again. And one thing Bill didn't mention about the letter, um, in 2019, USA Today named it 26 in the 100 greatest songs of all time. So that's pretty good. But now one, one little bit, <laughs> number one, thank you. One little bit of thing of that Memphis, which we didn't touch on tonight, which I think we'll encore with. A little bit of Memphis rockabilly, Gary. Started to blow, started out the drums and they started to roll. 
like it. Just knock me dead. Let me hear that trumpet. Come on, Sean. been a great audience thanks for thanks for having us up here in cape cod if you want to pick eddie cochran that's bobby fuller fuller yeah breaking rocks that one i found the law good thanks guys for coming to drive home yeah don't if you want to if you want to get a cd or a picture just hang out right here we'll be right with you thanks guys we appreciate it Let's hear it for the box tops. Don't forget to check the Music Room Facebook page at musicroom.com for upcoming shows. Tomorrow night, the Music Room welcomes guitar greats Mike Zito and Albert Casavetes. John Casavetes. And an all star cast. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Just hang right by this table right there, Mike. Thanks, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Anybody want a CD? Just see Mike right up here, guys. Thanks, brother. Yeah.